Just to uh, give a little bit of feedback on the uh, overall experience of the earthquake or what I was doing. Um, I was in my office um, working in a cubicle. Um, there's this, they're kind of low half, half cubicles, they're not really fuel, full cubicles and I started to feel you know a little bit of a shake and uh, someone stood up and said do, do you all feel that and I looked at my neighbor sitting next to me and he's like yeah I feel that and I felt it I was like starting to feel it get stronger and stronger and swaying back to back and forth I was looking at my monitor moving sliding back and forth on my desk and the, the lamp that's on my desk bouncing up and down I was like man I'm getting out of here so I grabbed my stuff and, and started heading out and then before I knew it everybody was running past me trying to get out of the building because we didn't want it want it to collapse because I'm in a I'm in a four-story building and it's uh, all concrete last thing I want to be is is that guy that uh, didn't get out of the building in time as it was coming down so uh, even the, the whole time it was it was like a long episode at least I'd say a good five minutes and nothing but shaking it was, it was at least five five minutes because I made it out of the building <laughs> and it was still shaking I felt like a drunk man crossed the street left the building and we were still standing in the parking lot away from all the other, other buildings and you could literally feel the ground moving left and right like a wave right. and like you like you were still drunk I so I would die. and then uh, you already thought she was gonna die but in a in a way in a sense it kind of gives you like an adrenaline rush but at the same time you have that a little bit of fear so but uh yeah and then we you could literally see like the telephone poles swaying and the wires that you knew that it, you weren't drunk I mean because uh, I kind of felt like that even after they cleared the building we went back in we sat down and before I could even get through maybe one phone call the another one came and and shaking the building and so I, I didn't hesitate that time I knew exactly what was going on I got the heck out of there same thing again after a couple minutes it, it kind of was like just a, a rock a gentle rock back and forth and then everybody went back inside and then uh, as soon as we sat down it started shaking again but then they basically told everybody that you know if you are uh, if you need to go home and see your families take care of your families go ahead and do that so I just split went home uh, took care of my family uh, so here we are now pitch black no traffic signals. No, not no nothing. I don't know if you guys can see. There's a traffic signal right there. No power to it. No power down the streets. Just cars. Up here at the, at the end of the road is a, a railroad track crossing. Uh, there's no railroads running. All railroad stations have stopped traffic. So in most, almost all the uh, traffic that comes south of Yokohama or anywhere in Japan a lot of people rely on the trains to get to places especially if you've been to Tokyo you know that the subways are basically the the blood of, of Tokyo you gotta get people in get people out and they cram them in like sardines everybody's seen those videos I've seen them I've experienced it it's not a comfortable thing to get crammed in there you know back to back face to face and me being a tall guy I got people in my armpits and, and everywhere else and I'm just smelling nasty sweaty after work people you know just dirty but uh I guess everybody's thinking like I am they're hungry and it, they can't cook anything at their house they don't want to open their fridge even if they did you know to, to spoil anything we don't want to let all the cold air out because let's face it the refrigerators here in Japan are kinda wimpy they're really small and puny and if you open it for five seconds you've done exhausted all the uh, AC that's in it you know the old all the cold air and uh, what good is it gonna do you anyway cuz I don't know I guess you could make a sandwich but uh, we don't have any fresh bread and every single store that I've seen that we've passed closed up shop so here's a gas station right here it's all roped off turned off so well, there's a guy parked up front, a couple guys, and they're just watching the shop, make sure nobody breaks into them, which is fine. I can I can understand that, but they're not selling any gas. Nobody's gonna be selling any gas in this area. So, kind of reminds me of that movie. I don't know if y'all seen it, uh, Live Free and Die Hard, that uh, fire cell thing. This is kind of like a small taste of that, 
where uh, you have no power, no communications. Our cell phones don't even work. I, I, it'll give us internet, so I can see the internet with my cell phone. I just can't make a call to nobody. I can't send a text message to nobody. Explain that to me. I don't understand it. I can get to the internet. I can see that you know that there was an earthquake at magnitude of an 8.9. And it was near the Tokyo area, the Tokyo City's area. And where we're located at right now is a little bit south of Tokyo, about... Uh, no, it's not Tokyo. Well, south of Tokyo is Yokohama. And south of Yokohama is where we're located at. But the area where they're saying the, the, uh, the uh, typhoon, not typhoon, the tsunami hit was in uh, Miyagi. In Miyagi. Which, if you need a map, north. what you want to go and look a little north. But still, Tokyo's pretty much out. They can't. Uh, I don't know if they. I think they got power. They just not running the trains. So the trains are down. And there's good reason to. I mean, think about it. I mean, you wouldn't want to be on a train and it starts shaking all like crazy and gets uh, jettisoned off the tracks, and then you got a catastrophe. Pretty sure there isn't any power on it. So, but uh. Anyways, that's enough of my gab. Let's put this puppy down. Just sit in traffic for a little while.